today we'll be talking about OCI Ops Insight Service. Uh, what you're looking at right now is the overview page of Ops Insight Service, and we'll be covering specifically capacity planning and Exadata Insights applications, and then SQL Insights application in this video. So let's click on the capacity planning app. Capacity planning app lets you do capacity planning as the, as the name says on top of uh, databases and hosts and Exadata systems that are enabled on Op Ops Insight service. Uh, right now you're looking at the landing page of capacity planning app. Uh, you can look at databases by type, version, and telemetry. On the right-hand side, you can look at aggregate view of CPU storage, memory, and IO, which is the underlying metrics uh, for the databases at, at an aggregate point of view. Uh, you can look at the total allocation across CPU storage, memory, and IO, and you, look, you can look at the usage uh, from a CPU perspective, storage, and memory perspective. Down below, we have what we have uh, insights section for CPU storage and memory insights, which provides you a quick view of looking at uh, some of the outliers from a highly utilized and lowly utilized databases point of view. So you can look at uh, databases that are kind of highly utilized from a CPU perspective, let's say uh, more than 75%, you can click on this hyperlink that will take you to uh, insights page. More so on the right hand side, you get uh, statistics around average usage, usage change utilization across your top databases and a usage trend chart across all the databases for the CPU. Similarly, you get uh, similar kind of insights across your storage, top consumers, storage trend, uh, top memory consumers, and top memory trend. Now let's look at, uh, explore some of the CPU, from a CPU perspective, what you can see for the insights within capacity planning app. Over here, you have a fleet wide view of all the databases that have been enabled on the op Ops Insight Service. Uh, you can look at uh, the compartment type, usage, allocation, and so on from a metadata perspective. You can search for the database of your choice. You can filter by databases by lowly utilized, highly utilized over the time period, or maybe the top consumers from a utilization perspective. You can also download this information as a CSV. You can change the compartment where the databases are residing. You can change by type of databases if you want to do that. You can look at the time range. Uh, Ops Insights allows you to save or store data uh, pertaining to your databases up to 25 months. You can also do uh, tag filters to do filtering based on that. So now what we're looking at is sales SP database. Uh, we can look at uh, what the historical trend has been. From an average active CPU perspective, we can look at what has been the allocation for this database. And then you can use the built-in forecasting models, uh, machine learning induced uh, forecasting models. Uh, depending on the innate uh, inherent data, uh, you can use either the linear regression, seasonality aware model, or a newly added model, which is the auto ML forecasting model. Uh, you can also uh, look at the max usage and the max usage forecast, if that is required uh, for your given use case. Now, uh, let's quickly look at uh, the aggregate view. Uh, the aggregate view also gives you a tree map heat map view of all the databases that have been enabled by usage, by utilization, and you can also look at it by allocation and usage change. Right now, we have selected usage, so it, the, each size of the database kind of gives you the usage from average active CPU perspective. So the larger the size of the database, the, the higher the usage, and the utilization kind of is depicted by the color. So the darker the color, the higher the utilization. Uh, we have also added what we call the grouping. Uh, we have different filters for grouping. Uh, for example, if you do it by VM cluster, what you can see is for, by CDB, if you do it by CDB, you can see uh, what are the CDBs and then what are the PDBs, underlying PDBs under that, right? So let's remove the grouping. Let's go to the none. In terms of auto ML forecasting, right? Uh, what we can get out of this is if you cl click on one of the databases and you click on auto ML forecast, it gives an overview of the overall historical data from an auto ML perspective, right? Uh, and then it gives you a forecast based on that. You can look at the max usage and the average usage for that particular database. And this is uh, automatically selected based on the eight auto ML models that are built in into this auto ML forecasting feature.
Okay. Now, a uh, similar kind of view is provided across storage metrics. Uh, you can look at the databases and the underlying storage from a consumption perspective, and you can do all the necessary analysis in terms of using the insights and the aggregate tabs. You can do that across your memory and IO, right? All right, uh, we also have uh, another application which is more geared towards Exadata systems. So what you're looking at as, as an inventory or a fleet-wide view of all the Exadata systems that are enabled on Ops Insight Service. Right now we have five Exadata systems. You can view them by type and rack type, rack size. You can look at the, the top level view of the CPU Exadata storage memory and IO across Exadata systems and tells you very quickly in terms of what the total allocation is and how much has been utilized to date over the analysis period. So right now we're looking at last 90 days. You can also look at the fleet-wide view of all the accelerator systems, the current utilization across the top metrics from a highest utilization point of view. And you can look at the, the forecast and see which ones are kind of like, will be hitting the high utilization in the next following days, right? So for example, this one is telling you that the CPU has already hit the limit and you need to, need to either increase the CPU for this given accelerator system or uh, reduce the load on it. So let's click on this full rack database that takes you into a accelerator system details page where it gives you a, a tangible view of the accelerator system and provides you a software inventory, a hardware inventory, and then also provides key metrics for that Exadata system from CPU, memory, IOPS, and Exadata storage perspective. More so similar to capacity planning app, we have, we can, the user can look at metrics by database, right, uh, in a similar tree map view by storage, memory, and IO. And they can also look at metrics by host, by CPU and memory, that is available out of the box. And lastly, they can also look at, which is exclusive to Exadata Insights, Exadata storage related metrics around storage, IOPS, and throughput maximum. Now, going back to the overview page, uh, I want to also cover a newly added application, which is SQL Insights application, which is a series of three dashboards which are connected, interconnected uh, from fleet level to a database level and from database level to a SQL level dashboard. So right now we are looking at the database level dashboard, which is providing a fleet wide view of all the databases that have been enabled in Ops Insight Service and provides you a, a view of all the insights pertaining to the SQLs that are running across those fleet of databases. So we have two databases. It tells you what are some of the commands are running across the databases in a tree map view. It also provides you insights across degrading SQLs, SQLs with plan changes, SQLs with cursor sharing issues, and so on, and also provides a top-level view of all the databases from important metadata pertaining to them. So let's click on databases with plan changes. Once you click on that, it takes you to databases with plan changes page, where it tells you sales W2 is a database with a lot of plan changes, about 39 plan changes in the last seven days. That leads you up to, if you click on that, that leads you up to a SQL Insights database page pertaining to that particular da database, right? So you're only looking at sales W2 database in this, uh, in this case. Uh, you can look at all the necessary information pertaining to that database from command, uh, the SQL PL SQLs that have been run across databases, a SQL activity by module, SQL activity by average active sessions. You can look at the important metadata and insights gleaned across that particular database, right? And what has happened? So for the for this sake, let's click on click on uh, degraded plan changes for this database. You know, we can see about twenty eight plan changes for this database. If you click on that, it takes you to a degraded plan changes, and we can see some of the the SQL IDs are creating a lot of estimate delivery time has been going up for them, and also the average latency has been creeping up for those databases. So let's click click on the first one. That takes you to SQL Insights SQL page, and that page is very quickly provides you a performance information pertaining to that SQL for that database, right? So the database and the SQL ID is automatically filtered. It's tell you, it tells you very quickly uh, in, in terms of the last seven days what has happened for the DB times. And we can see the DB time has been creeping up of late, right? And why it is creeping up? 
It also gives you a very nice information about average latency. And we can see the plan change has happened around 11th of the month, 11th September. And what has that cost? That has cost the average latency, average latency to go up quite a bit. Thanks for watching.